The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While everyone was amazed at all that Jesus was doing, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But they did not understand the saying. Its meaning was concealed from them, so that they could not perceive it. And the disciples were afraid to ask Jesus about this saying. The Gospel of the Lord. Today and Monday and Tuesday of next week, we read from the prophet Zechariah, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, one of the post-exilic prophets after the release of the Jews from Babylon by King Cyrus. He's an important prophet, one of the most prolific in terms of messianic prophecy. So, for example, he prophesies the Messiah riding into Jerusalem on a colt, his betrayal for 30 pieces of silver, and the piercing of his hands and feet, all of which were fulfilled by Christ in his passion. He calls the Messiah the branch, the good shepherd, the priest king, and God's servant. In today's first reading, the second chapter of Zechariah, he encourages the people to fulfill the task they have been given by God through King Cyrus, which was to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. They're back in Jerusalem, but they're facing all kinds of opposition from the neighboring peoples who are trying to prevent any reconstruction. And Zechariah has a vision which he relates to the people. And the vision is an angel comes and Zechariah looks up and sees this angel with a measuring line in his hand. And he's measuring Jerusalem to see what is its width and what is its length. And that in particular is saying that the temple will be rebuilt. So it's an encouragement for these people to get to work. The angel also says to Zechariah that Jerusalem will be inhabited like villages without walls because of the multitude of the people. For I will be a wall of fire all around it, says the Lord, and I will be the glory within it. In other words, Jerusalem will be protected by God. There will be no need for walls because of his presence. Now that ultimately on earth, that prophecy is fulfilled in Holy Mother, our Catholic Church because this is the true temple that Christ has built on Peter. And because of God's presence all around us in the sacraments, and particularly the Eucharist, Christ dwelling in our tabernacle, that is the protection, the wall of fire, and the glory of God within it. And that's why we're here this morning, to receive Christ and to glorify Christ for all he is doing because he's building a wall of protection around us as well because each of us are the church and we need protection and the Holy Spirit is here as the saints said the Eucharist is the fire of the Holy Spirit now present in us but as Jesus says in today's gospel there is a cost involved a price to be paid And Jesus paid that price on the cross. And by his death and resurrection, sin now is defeated for those who receive Christ. And a wall of fire, as I said, protects us, the Holy Spirit within us. This also relates ultimately to the church triumphant, the heavenly Jerusalem, where we are with God's grace headed. So it's a great word of encouragement to us today that although we face many trials and the world is going through difficult times, as is the church, we have this prophecy. It relates to us today, not just to the Israelites of the 6th century B.C. Zechariah, his name means Yahweh remembers. That's what we're called to do, to remember 
the promises and to come into the church now and receive the blessings and the glory of God that was prophesied way back in the Old Testament. And then to give glory and honor to God and give him thanks and to say with the psalmist, for the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. We're here to give thanks to God for what he is doing presently in our lives. Let us go out and proclaim the good news and invite others into this wall of protection the presence of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God.